Hey guys, it's Judy from Nutrition with Judy. That is the introduction. So thanks for joining me again in this episode. Um, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. And please like my videos. This helps me to share content with you guys. Okay, so this week we are going to talk about packing lunches and with a focus on our kids' lunches. And although we talk about kids' lunches, this everything we talk about can be applied to all adults as well. So how do you guys pack your kids' lunches? So I know a lot of us are really busy and so we want to pack quick lunches. We want to make it super simple. We have to pack lunches for ourselves as well as kids. And sometimes it could just be a lot. But instead of packing these quick, easy lunches like Lunchables and um, a lot of the processed foods, we really need to focus on nutrient-dense lunches. I can't stress how important it is to pack nutrient-dense lunches. If you've signed up to get my mini nutrient-dense ebook, I talk about how by age five that the brain is 90% developed. And although the brain weighs only about three pounds-ish, it has more than 25% of all the cholesterol in the body in the brain. And so what does that mean? That means that basically the brain is 60% fat. And remember, every single cell in our body, the outer layer is made up of fat. And so then you wonder why pediatricians recommend transitioning our kids to low fat foods or why our doctors tell us to eat low fat foods. For our kids, one reason is because the government is trying to battle childhood obesity. So what does the government do? They have pediatricians recommend to parents to have their kids switch to low fat milks so that the thought is low fat equals low weight. Uh, obviously this isn't true. And so please, please do not feed your kids low fat milk. We need fat for hormone productions. We need fat for satiety. We need fat for the brain. So again, fat is super important. And so we should not be feeding our kids, especially low fat products. On top of that, when you remove the fat, the food doesn't taste good. So what happens? The food industry has circumvented the problem by just adding a ton of sugar. And if you strip away all the fat from milk, you are also stripping away the fat soluble vitamins A, D, and K. And so what happens? The milk companies then fortify the milk. So they add back in processed vitamins or synthetic vitamins to have the milk then have the vi original vitamins it has. If you don't mess with nature, nature has all its natural vitamins that will probably be much more bioavailable and absorbable by our bodies. But going back to childhood obesity, it's the sugars that make us fat. It is not fat. So today I'm going to walk you through packing my son's lunch. So nuts. I used to feed my sons a lot of nuts, especially cashews. Well, most nuts have multiple anti-nutrients, phytates, lectins, oxalates, the list goes on. So lately I'm trying not to feed my kids nuts. And then there's also legumes. So legumes have a high amount of lectin and hard lectins in legumes are pretty impervious to any type of soaking, sprouting, and even cooking. So I would recommend staying away from legumes just because of the anti-nutrients. One option you can give for nuts is macadamia nuts. So macadamia nuts have lower phytates and they are primarily made of MUFAs, monounsaturated fatty acids. They also are almost zero protein and almost all fat. So it's a decent nut with less anti-nutrients and it's also a decent fat. They also have better omega ratios and PUFAs than most other nuts. All right guys, so I am about to make my kids lunches. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to include today, but this is sort of a start for right now. So let me go over some of these. We are currently not at my house right now, so we are going to feed my son this goat milk. It is not organic or raw, but it's the only goat's milk we have access to right now. So it's, um, we prefer goat's milk over cow's milk, but it is pasteurized, but okay. So moving on, so he'll probably have a cup of that and then um, we will likely use all these products and um, we're gonna also use some chuck ground beef. All right, so this is a little bit of rotisserie chicken and then I used a little bit of this mayo. So if you don't 
make your own mayo, this is probably your next best bet. Um, so it uses avocado oil. Um, and so sometimes we add this avocado ranch, um, but it does use some sunflower oil, so I'm kind of shying away from those as well now. And so this is a little bit of uncured uh, no nitrate ham, and then I'll probably do some roll-ups with the string cheese. And then this is also pork rinds, um, and then I'm gonna hard boil these pasture-raised eggs and this avocado. So I'll put some of the avocado and then we'll see how this goes. And then this is organic string cheese. Um, so we normally used to give these uh, sweet potatoes and these are the Japanese ones. I found out recently while doing research for my upcoming book that half a cup of these sweet potatoes um, has about 120 grams of oxalates. And so half a cup would probably be maybe half of this sweet potato, maybe a little bit more than that. And basically anything above 40 grams to 50 grams of oxalates is considered a very high oxalate food. Okay, so I am going to hard boil the eggs because usually scrambled eggs don't taste as good. I'll cook them in butter, but uh, they normally don't taste good cold. And so they prefer hard boiled. And so I'll add a little bit of salt. And then over here, I'm going to start cooking. So this is the Mega Spore Biotic that my son takes. I right now give him about half of one and I'm taking giving it to him about every other day. It is 100% spore based. Redmond's real salt because salt is not bad and it has a lot of minerals. Um, I also put a lot of salt on the eggs and so now um, I cut these up really small so that they could just you know use a fork and just make it easy for them to eat while they're at school. I am making a ham and cheese roll up. I try to put a little less dairy, but. At home, I'll put a little bit, a little toothpick, but here I'll just give it like this since they can't probably take toothpicks. And so I'll give them both two each. Now, since I'm doing roll-ups, normally I would have like five different things or I'll have a different compartment. But since I have this, I would just make it like that. I can add a little bit of chicken to this one. So I could do it like this. And again, this just has a little bit of Redmond salt, a little bit of chicken rotisserie, rotisserie chicken, and then a little bit of that avocado oil mayo. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to move it into this container, even though it's a little bit smaller than the ones that my, I use for my kids. So let's just take off an egg. And I normally would never put it in these paper uh, cups. I'm, I think the silicone ones are okay uh, once the food is cooled down, but these, um, they'll probably get really wet by the, end, by the time it's their lunch. And so, what I would do is instead of putting all of this into here, what I'll end up doing is I would just give this as his lunch and then I would give this as his snack. So again, as I always said, for me, since we normally don't give our kids snack, snack for them is just a continuation of their lunch. And so sometimes we'll, um, sometimes we'll give them carbs in their lunch. So maybe I'll add a few blueberries, I used to add raspberries, but even raspberries has uh, high oxalates, and so now we'll probably do strawberries and blueberries. Sometimes we do 
mandarin oranges, and I know those have probably oxalates as well, but anyways, um, again, it's balanced. And so, but I'll never in their snack give them a lot of carbs or sugar because again, once they start having a lot of sugar in their snack, it starts that whole sugar and insulin roller coaster. So again, they have snack around 10-ish and they have their goat's milk around nine and then they would have this at lunch. Now we normally don't give snack again because that's eating every two hours, which we never do in our household. And so this would be their snack and then this would be their lunch. I know they would get a little bored, so normally I would add a little bit more carbs in this, but for now, this is just a good example. And then I could have given a little bit more like pork rinds. Um, sometimes we do pork rinds with cream cheese in here, and so we would only have maybe one of the grass-fed uh, ground beef burgers. Or I'll do the pork rinds with cream cheese during their snack. It really depends, but this is a good idea or this is a good example of how we feed our kids. So again, there's avocado and string cheese in there. And then in here there is, oh yeah, there's the chicken. So, I mean, this is how we pack our lunches. It's pretty simple. And uh, a lot of times we'll pack our leftovers from dinner because again, we eat nutrient dense dinners most days. All right, so this is the finished product. This is his lunch. So again, there's ham, cheese, avocado, and then there's eggs, there's ground beef, and then I would put a little bit more pork rinds maybe. And then in this one, there's a little bit of chicken with avocado oil, mayo, and then there's another egg, I guess, again, another extension of their lunch. And sometimes we add a little bit of fruit or sometimes I'll add a little treat to his lunch. And yeah, that's it. Now, if you're wondering about portions, I generally don't worry too much about them. I know this seems like a lot of food. That's about a quarter pound of ground beef and then, I don't know, it's only a couple slices or a few slices of ham and then one and a half eggs, a little bit of pork rinds and just one string cheese. But I know one, how much my kids gen generally eat and then two, I just have them trust their own body. So if they're full, some days they come home with half of their food back sometimes, and then they'll just finish it at home. And some days they'll eat the whole thing. So it really depends. And I keep saying them, but Caleb is the only one that has gone to school so far. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Aiden eats outside of home. But basically I would make two of these and that would be the lunch for the day. And then once they eat this and the breast milk or goat's milk in the morning, then for dinner, we'll just have another nutrient dense dinner. Uh, which would obviously consist of some type of animal meat and some fats and and yes They typically won't have a snack sometimes they do after school or sometimes they'll just finish up their lunch But in general, I don't feed them outside of those times So I wasn't sure what to do with the leftovers and so I just mashed the avocado and the remaining chicken in here So now we can use this as a pork rind dip And then I'm just gonna make another plate for the kids we also have beef liver and chicken liver in the fridge now, and so tomorrow I'll probably cook it up and we'll have some more pate. All right, guys, I hope that this was helpful for you guys. I hope that this gives you inspiration to pack nutrient-dense lunches for yourself, for your loved ones, and for your kids. I have a lunch ideas guide that's part of the mini ebook, so I definitely recommend you picking that up. Again, it's in the notes but that'll give you some other ideas of what to pack your kids for lunch. All right, guys, so let me know what you guys pack for your kids this week, what you guys pack for yourselves for lunch this week. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to subscribe. Please make sure to hit the bell, and please make sure to like this video so that I can produce more content for you guys. All right, have a good one, and I'll see you guys next Saturday. Bye.